So good afternoon everyone. So this is the continuation of the yesterday's class. Uh, we have completed the larynx yesterday and uh, straight away without wasting any time already we are 15 minutes late. Uh, we will start, we will straight away start with the nose part, right? Okay. Hopefully you are able to see the screen here, right? So this is uh, complete, coming to the nose part, okay? So, sorry. Okay. So coming to the nose, okay? So you have an external nose as well. The external framework that appears, uh, the nose that is appear that is <coughs> appears outside, you have a very big internal nose as well, right? Okay, so first we will come to the parts of the your external nose, okay? External nose. So it is the parts of the external nose, mainly you have your nasal bones in the upper one third, right side and left side. So these are the two nasal bones, okay? So first one is nasal bones, which form the external framework, bony framework of your external nose. Huh? They occupy the upper one third of your external nose, right? And then you have cartilages below. These are upper lateral cartilages. Okay. So these are called upper lateral. So this lateral side one, this lateral side one. So you have upper lateral cartilages below the nasal bones connected to them. And uh, below that you have lower lateral cartilages as well. This lower lateral cartilages are called as alar cartilages. So these are the lower lateral cartilages. They are also called as alar cartilages. Okay. So... <coughs> The cartilaginous portion is formed by the lower two third. Okay, your external auditory canal. If you remember, the outer one third is formed by cartilaginous, and inner two third is formed by bony. If you come to the external framework of your nose, the upper one third is formed by bony part. The lower two third is formed by your cartilaginous part. The external nose framework is formed like this, right? So just correlate with the external auditory canal. The inverse will be true if this is the external auditory canal, eardrum and middle ear you have here. So in the external auditory canal, the outer one third will be cartilaginous and the inner two third will be bony, right? Here, the upper one third will be bony and the lower two third will be cartilaginous, right? So quickly moving on to the next slide, okay? So coming to the next, uh, the muscles attached uh, to this, okay? Muscles, so you are not visible here. Okay, so coming to muscles that are attached to the attached to external nose. Muscles that are attached to external nose. You see here, this muscle name is procerus. It's just by hearting part. We'll come to see the functions in detail. Procerus nasalis. Okay, the second one. This is nasalis. Okay. If you see here, the nasal completely occupying the superior surface of the nose, nasalis, and this is the procerus connecting from the forehead to the nasal dorsum, okay? This is procerus, right? And uh, one important uh, muscle, levator labii superioris alec nasi, very big name. So this function of the muscle is it whenever you want to forcibly inhale, you have to dilate your nares. Huh? So this muscle helps along with the another muscle called as dilator nares. Okay. Along with the dilator nares, you have these two. So these two help in forceful inspiration, right? Okay. So you can see the levator labia superioris alec nasi. So it will help in lifting your uh, the nasal uh, uh, this one uh, alar area so that you can breathe in more air. Okay, so and dilated nares. Okay, these are the dilated nares muscles he present over here. When they contract, they will open up the so they can they can open up your uh, ala. Okay, the opening the anterior coina, right? And the fifth one is your depressor septi. Okay, depressor septi. You can see here the depressor septi that depresses the the depresses the like this. Okay, so various movements on the nose can be done with the help of these muscles. Just remember procerus nasalis, levator labiae superioris, alec nasi, and dilator nares and uh, uh, depressor septi, various muscles attached to the external nose. Okay. Uh, coming to the next part, uh, skin lining over the this is important. Coming to the skin lining over the skin over the external nose. Okay. There are various conditions. 
first of all you need to know what is exactly is present in the skin here on the nose in the upper third okay in the upper part the skin is very thin whereas if you come to lower part it is very thick why it is thick because it has got a sebaceous glands underlying inside at the tip near the tip you have the sebaceous glands lying near the tip okay so upper one third upper one third you have very thin there are no glands over here that's why always this part will be appearing dry if you come to this part this part will be appearing oily a bit sometimes okay so that's why the oiliness is due to the secretions by the sebaceous glands sebum secretion by the sebaceous glands so any hypertrophy of these sebaceous glands any hypertrophy of these sebaceous glands so that is in cases of long standing cases of acne rosacea can happen and that causes a condition that is called as rhinophyma okay or it is also called as potato tumor it appears like a potato so it is also called as a potato tumor in the skin over the external nose the uh, the tumor arises from the sebaceous glands inside okay the treatment is just uh, lift over, lift the skin and inside remove all the diseased part from the inside the treatment will be excision and uh, so once you excise there will be excise there will be a skin deficiency will be there so you have to graft the skin okay skin grafting can needs to be done in these cases another condition those who are exposed to more uv radiation there you can see basal cell carcinoma this is also called as rodent ulcer okay that appears in elderly uh, elderly population those who are exposed to constant more amount of uv radiation okay there will be the edges will be rolled rolled edges will be there in case of basal cell carcinoma with the pearly white sorry with the pearly white okay pearly white structures will be present keratin formation rolled edges will be there okay the treatment will be again excision with the 3 to 5 mm margin basal cell carcinoma treatment will be excision with 3 to 5 mm margins from the tumor point if this is that if there is a, wherever the tumor is lying surrounding it up to 5 mm area needs to be removed completely with excision okay and later on you can go for radiotherapy right coming to the next structure that is your the parts of the external nose okay so what are the exact you can see if you see the external framework of the nose right now where the nose starts is the tip of this is the root of the nose okay so this is the root of the nose and uh, you have this is the dorsum of the nose and this is the tip of the nose where you have a lot uh, sebaceous gland concentrations are more inside thick skin will be present uh, and this is the columella area okay so these are the parts of your external nose so not much important here okay we can move on to the next part that is your vestibule so coming to the vestibule here you have a condition okay vestibule everywhere you come across vestibule in ear you come across vestibule in larynx you come across vestibule in nose also you come across vestibule in ear in the inner ear in the uh, bony labyrinth you have a vestibule where inside the vestibule your membranous parts membranous labyrinth parts like saccule and utricle will be lying inside okay your saccule will be lying vertically so they will be detecting your vertical linear acceleration like you are going in the lift up and down that motion will be detected by the saccule vertically lying saccule and in the utricle you will be having horizontally lying uh, maculae uh, the sensory structures that detect the movement uh, so this will be detecting your horizontal movements right so horizontal linear movements are detected by utricle and the vertical linear movements are detected by saccule so both these are present in membranous labyrinth which these two structures are lodged in the bony labyrinth that area where the bony labyrinth lodges these two membranous labyrinth structures utricle and saccule this bony labyrinth part is called as vestibule in the ear in the larynx yesterday we have studied where there is a gap between the uh, false vocal cords and the true vocal cords in between the false and true vocal cords you have a entry into the saccule of the larynx that area where you enter into the saccule of the larynx is called as vestibule of the larynx right and coming here to the nose part vestibule of the nose uh, in the starting one is greenish area over here is the vestibule the hair lined part in the okay the skin containing hair okay the skin with hair in the entrance part hair and also you will be having sebaceous glands skin and sebe skin with hair and sebaceous glands in the anterior part of the nasal cavity is called as vestibule okay so infection of the hair follicle here okay 
this causes the infection of the hair follicle here infection of hair follicle in the vestibule region is called as vestibulitis this vestibulitis is most commonly caused by staphylococcal aureus pilosebaceous units wherever present the hair with the sebaceous gland combination pilosebaceous units most common infecting organism is staph aureus okay and uh, you can uh, the treatment will be you have to give a local antibiotic like mupirocin which is anti staphylococcal local mupirocin as well as systemic you can give amoxicillin right and also some symptomatic if there is pain you can go for painkiller antihistamines like that you can give so this is about your vestibulitis here the point is the organism causative organism is staphylococcus aureus treatment will be anti staphylococcal antibiotics and uh, most probably this is due to the infection of the hair follicles in the vestibule area okay and uh, so the, with this this is the endoscopic picture you can see over here see the anterior hair lined part is the vestibule if you see inside this is the nasal cavity we are entering into the nasal cavity here so in the la laterally you will have the inferior turbinate and medially you will be having the septum right yeah coming to the next part okay nasal valve so we, we discuss we will discuss here about the what exactly is the nasal valve they may ask once it was asked the boundaries of the nasal valve were asked once sir simple description of the nasal valve is this is the narrowest part of the nasal cavity why there is a narrowest part of the nasal cavity is that so to increase the velocity of the air to increase the spread of the air inside the entire the nasal cavity initially one narrowing area will be there so once the air tries to pass through that na narrowed area it will get later on be after crossing this narrow area the velocity of the air will increase and it will go back uh, it will be able to spread to complete uh, nasal cavity beyond right you understood because uh, area into velocity if you reduce the area the velocity will be more right area is inversely proportional to velocity so that so if there is a narrowing of the nasal cavity in the in the initial anterior part what happens the air will go with a much velocity to the posterior part and also towards the superior okay so so you can see here see laterally the, the there is a upper upper lateral cartilage is present laterally upper lateral cartilage exactly if you see inside the nasal cavity the nasal valve area will be lying over here okay so that is this is the upper lateral cartilage the lower border of upper lateral cartilage remember lower border of upper lateral cartilage will be forming the lateral border okay will be forming the lateral border of the nasal wall and the inferiorly inferior border is formed by your floor of the nasal cavity and uh, <coughs> medial medial wall is formed by your septum so remembering septum and floor is not much difficult because obviously whichever nasal cavity you take inferiorly there will be floor medially there will be septum to any of the nasal cavity so laterally where exactly is the nasal valve area is that the area where the lower border of the upper lateral cartilage coincides inside the nasal cavity that area is more narrowest part and this angle is approximately 30 degrees remember this may be asked the angle at the nasal valve is 30 degrees so while doing rhinoplasties as well as septoplasties we do take care of maintaining a narrow part in the anterior part of the nasal cavity such that later on the patient do not feel that if the cavity is completely roomy like atrophic rhinitis so the patient cannot sense the air entry and they will be always complaining of nasal nasal block okay okay so they they will be always asking they will be always complaining of the complete nasal block even though there is no physical block inside the patients will be feeling the they have a nasal block when you see all the all the uh, turbinates will be atrophied inside the nasal cavity and uh, uh, the patient can due to there is the velocity of the airflow is uh, the is completely damaged there is completely lost there and the patient cannot sense the airflow inside the nasal cavity okay so coming to the next structure so lateral nasal wall so next we will come to lateral nasal wall okay so this is most important medial nasal wall is nothing but your septum there is nothing much to study on the medial nasal wall or septum 
So the medial vessel, nasal wall, the septum, the cartilage, the bones forming it will be studied. Before that, we will come to the lateral nasal wall. Most of the students will be having difficulty understanding the lateral nasal wall. So this is the vestibule area, you know, okay, already we have studied. And here, the another anterior part to your, uh, to your uh, uh, turbinates is the atrium. This we call it as a atrium, okay, atrium, the part of the lateral nasal wall that lies posterior to the vestibule and anterior to the turbinates is atrium. And coming back, there are more three important structures are there, inferior turbinate, middle turbinate and the superior turbinate. If you take your nasal cavity, you will be having your inferior turbinate inferiorly, middle turbinate medially, mid, uh, in the middle and superior turbinate superiorly. Okay, Just below this middle turbinate, in between this middle turbinate and inside the uh, middle turbinate, there is a meatus. Okay? Corresponding to inferior turbinate, there will be inferior meatus behind it and middle meatus and superior meatus, okay. So, what exactly is happening in these turbinates, why they are present, what is the function of these turbinates, let us discuss. Okay, if you see from anteriorly, actually, if you see from anteriorly, you will be having the inferior turbinate like this, okay, middle turbinate and superior turbinate like this. So, here this area is inferior meatus and this area is middle meatus. And this area is superior meatus. Okay. Hope you understood. Okay. Okay. So coming to inferior turbinate now. Inferior turbinate. So separately, if you come to inferior turbinate, remember one important MCQ here. Inferior turbinate itself is a separate bone, whereas other two turbinates are part of your ethmoid bone okay uh, the other two turbinates are part of your ethmoid bone inferior turbinate itself is a separate bone okay it itself is a separate bone the attachments of the inferior turbinate anteriorly here in this area you will be having a lacrimal bone here okay if you remove this mucosa here if the pink lining mucosa is removed from here and behind you can see the lacrimal bone here right lacrimal bone is anteriorly the inferior turbinate is attached to lacrimal bone and also here you have a process you can see a process over here that is uncinate process lying in front of your middle meatus uncinate process so anteriorly lacrimal bone and uncinate process are the structures that are uh, that gives attachment to your inferior turbinate posteriorly there is a palatine bone is there okay this uh, turbinate gets attached to this palatine bone posteriorly. Remember these attachments may be asked. Uh, inferior turbinate is a separate bone. Okay. So coming to the, this is the endoscopic picture. You can see the endoscopic picture. This is the enlarged inferior turbinate that we will come across when we are re reading about chronic rhinosinusitis. We will know why this gets enlarged. Uh, what is the reasons? Okay. Septum. Okay, this is the medially lying septum, laterally lying inferior turbinate which is enlarged, blocking the nasal cavity, patient will come to you with a complaint of nose block. Okay, so coming to the inferior meatus now, inferior turbinate is over, now we are discussing about inferior meatus. I already told you what exactly is inferior meatus is that, this if this is the inferior turbinate, here, the area that is lying in between the lateral wall and the inferior turbinate, that is your inferior meatus. Which structure opens into inferior meatus? Most in, in, important is nasolacrimal duct with the help of Hasner's valve. Nasolacrimal duct with the help of Hasner's valve opens into your inferior meatus. This is very important. Okay. So, what exactly is this nasolacrimal duct, which is a 1.8 centimeters? long structure okay so this is a <clears throat> this is nasolacrimal duct is a drainage duct tear draining duct that opens from the eye to the nose okay so we'll come in detail about it okay about the inferior meatus and the hasner's valve so before that you have to understand about the lacrimal apparatus okay what exactly is this lacrimal apparatus see if you take your eyes both the eyes right okay Okay, if you take both your eyes, right, right, and here you have your nose, right, right, okay, okay, see, okay, 
So here you have your inferior turbinate and this is your inferior meatus. Inside if you see there is a duct here Hasner's wall will be there. Okay. And this duct will be opening into a sac over here that is you call it as lacrimal sac and of the into this lacrimal sac the canaliculi lacrimal canaliculi will be op opening here so i'll just draw another diagram okay you can see medially you can have lacrimal puncta okay and they will go like this okay and a common duct will be formed and lacrimal sac will be formed and nasolacrimal duct will be coming down and it will be opening in through the Hasner's valve into the inferior meatus. So this is how exactly the lacrimal apparatus looks like. On the superior lateral surface, there will be a lacrimal gland will be there. Lacrimal gland will be there. The lacrimal gland will be secreting the tears into the eye, that is into your conjunctiva. From there, the tears will be, the tears will be entering into your lacrimal canaliculi and the lacrimal superior lacrimal canaliculus inferior lacrimal canaliculus which joins to form a common canaliculus and this enters into your lacrimal sac and from the lacrimal sac it goes through the nasolacrimal duct in through the Hasner's valve into your inferior meatus and that into your nasal cavity okay and that's why while crying you always do like this uh, you always try to sniff for because excess tears are that are being produced uh, will flow through this lacrimal apparatus and they will come through the uh, nasolacrimal duct Hasner's valve into the inferior meatus and into the nasal cavity so in order to avoid their tears coming out you will in inhale it okay sorry you will uh, <coughs> inhale it right so that is how why you do like this while crying okay so the excess tears if formed what is the function of the tears the tears will always clear off the, uh, the uh, surrounding dust, everything will be collected. So they protect the underlying structures and continuous drainage system will be there. So continuously tears will be producing at a slower rate and they will be slowly flowing towards the puncta. And from there puncta it will be going and it will be entering into the nasal cavity. From there nasal cavity into the throat and from there throat into your uh, esophagus and the stomach in the acid all this will get destroyed. And this is how the normal passage will be there, there the, this is the lacrimal uh, apparatus okay so in cases in some cases there will be obstruction of this nasolacrimal duct either it be congenital or it can be due to acquired conditions also so what happens in those conditions the nasolacrimal duct gets blocked so the tears will get completely filled in the sac and there is no space for the tears to come over here and the tears will come, continue, come out through the eye even if the patient is not crying as the drainage system is affected so the tears will come out through the eye only that uh, that uh, complaint is called as epiphora that is watering of the eyes so in these cases you should suspect the nasolacrimal duct obstruction or any pathology in the lacrimal apparatus and you do a syringing, so you do with a Bowman's probe, you probe it and you, <coughs> you push saline through the upper canaliculus and if it is coming back through the lower canaliculus, then all these structures are intact. If you push saline through the upper canaliculus, it goes and as there is block here, it will come back through the other canaliculus. So this, this indicates that there is a block in the nasolacrimal duct, clear, okay. if 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 you are, whatever the saline you are pushing through this tube is not even passing okay if there is no backflow through this okay if there is no backflow so there may be obstruction in the canaliculus itself okay so first you have to clear that and then you have to look for any other obstructions over here okay this surgery okay when there is a nasolacrimal duct obstruction so if it is unrelievable by medication then we will go with surgery and we create an opening from the nasolacrimal sac, lacrimal sac directly into the nasal cavity bypassing the nasolacrimal duct so the tears will be directly flowing into the nasal cavity like this okay so this surgery is called as dacryocystorhinostomy dacryocystorhinostomy okay this is done when there is an obstruction of the nasolacrimal duct okay whenever nasolacrimal duct is obstructed you do a dcr dacryocystorhinostomy and you 
give a pathway for the tear cell to flow for into the nose okay so that is what is happening in case of uh, dcf right clear coming to the next most important most confused most under uh, under most uh, less understood structure that is middle turbinate don't worry about the structure of the middle turbinate even if you don't get it nothing to worry simple first remember the first part will be sagittal second part will be your <coughs> coronal and third part will be axial sagittal coronal and axial okay so remember this point so first of all your septum is there like this in the midline both sides both terminates should arise okay the first part of the middle turbinate will be uh, in the in the same sagittal plane parallel to your both uh, the septum okay so it will be passing from anterior to posterior so if this middle turbinate has to pass from anterior to posterior it has got to be attached to the superior line structure so exactly what is structure is present between the nose and the brain the roof of the nose is formed by your cribriform plate right so this middle turbinate sagittal structure the first part of the middle turbinate that is the sagittal lying structure that should be attaching to the cribriform plate above so the first part of the middle turbinate is uh, sagittally arranged uh, and that is attached to the cribriform plate above and uh, once getting attached to the cribriform plate above okay the second part will be lying in the coronal plane okay so in the coronal plane it has to go towards the laterally right it is coming like this and it is going laterally what exactly is lying laterally here in between the nose and the eye the lamina papyracea okay so the second structure second part of the middle turbinate that is which is lying in the coronal plane is attached to your lamina papyracea okay and the third part that is your uh, axial plane which is lying in the axial plane that also attaches to the lamina papyracea okay so <clears throat> because the axial part also needs to be attached to the, to the lateral part so the remember the, uh, the attachments of the three parts of the middle turbinate first the sagittal should come so the upper part should be so the upper part should be attached above so the you can simply remember the above lying structure in the nose is nothing but your cribriform plate so the sagittal part will be attaching to your cribriform plate and once it turns laterally and goes laterally okay in the coronal plane it has to get attached to the laterally lying structure the laterally lying structure is nothing but your lamina papyracea if you cross the lamina papyracea you will be entering into the orbit so the orbit and the nasal cavity the, the partition structure is nothing but your lamina papyracea which is a papery like structure and also after passing like this it will become horizontal axial okay axial plane and also that will be attaching to your lamina papyracea okay so overall it appears like a dried leaf okay the middle turbinate appears like a dried leaf like structure okay as i already told you inferior turbinate only is a separate bone whereas your middle turbinate and superior turbinate are parts of the ethmoid bone okay so this middle turbinate is a part of your ethmoid bone right clear so you can see here the first part okay the first part you can see see this is the first part of the middle turbinate you can see which is attaching to your cribriform plate so this is your cribriform plate right you can see your cribriform plate crista galli right so the first part is attaching to the cribriform plate above you can see the second part which is running laterally and that is attaching to your lamina papyracea this is your lamina papyracea this is orbit right and this is your nasal cavity ethmoid sinuses over here the second part and coming to the third part see the third part is also attached to your lamina papyracea laterally okay fine so these are the three parts of your when you see endoscopically see this is the middle turbinate this bulky structure is the middle turbinate I think there is concavulosa here. That's why it is so much bulky. And you can see a semicircular uncinate process over here. In between the uncinate process and middle turbinate, this is the middle meatus area. If you just lateralize, see, you can see a elevator over here. With this, they are lateralizing. They are just uh, pushing the middle turbinate away to see the middle meatus. You can see this is the bulla ethmoidalis. This area is called as bulla ethmoidalis. The uh, anterior most part of your ethmoid air cells that is bulla ethmoidalysis planetoria that we will come to discuss in the next classes. Okay, so coming to the next anatomical abnormality of the middle turbinate, this is concha bullosa. What exactly is concha bullosa? Nothing but 
pneumatization pneumatization sometimes during development the pneumatization may even extend into your the middle turbinate even and that causes your pneumatization of the middle turbinate so while uh, when you are born your bones are not completely pneumatized the pneumatization process will slowly go on continuously right so that pneumatization pattern if it enters if it enters into the middle turbinate also then your middle turbinate will also uh, will be having an air cell inside okay so you can see the middle turbinate see the first part of the middle turbinate attached to the fibriform plate over here and see the middle turbinate carrying an air cell inside so very huge this side also a small concobulosa can be seen in the middle turbinate right so this is called as concobulosa so what exactly happens if concobulosa is there see the maxillary ostium present over here the drainage of the maxillary ostium will get affected due to the bulkiness of the middle turbinate that is due to concobulosa and uh, the patient may be getting complete recurrent sinusitis attacks okay the treatment for this will be to thin the uh, uh, concobulosa to remove the concobulosa crush the concobulosa or open the mucosa and crush the bony part of it and uh, you can uh, then do a middle medial antrostomy that's it you will be providing adequate ventilation to the sinuses right okay so this is one of the common causes of chronic rhinosinusitis concobulosa which obstructs the ventilation of the maxillary and ethmoid sinuses can be a cause of chronic rhinosinusitis okay right coming to the next point okay next structure that is your so agar nasi that is your agar nasi okay so what exactly is this agar nasi okay <coughs> the anterior most ethmoidal air cell is agar nasi see this is agar nasi agar nasi is anterior most ethmoidal air cell it is present in almost 80 percent of the cases so this is your agar nasi if you see a sagittal view of the lateral wall of your nose nasal lateral nasal wall see this is the frontal sinus okay and this is draining this opening here into the frontal sinus is the frontal ostium you can see a narrowing part of is the uh, near the frontal sinus entry that area where the frontal sinus starts is the frontal infundibular and you come down this area where there is a narrowing uh, uh, that uh, that is lined posteriorly by ethmoid and anteriorly by agar nasi this part is called as frontal recess okay and this frontal recess drains into your middle meatus okay okay and uh, this is the inferior turbinate as you can see right so <clears throat> and this is the these are the anterior ethmoids you can see the middle turbinate and the, the second part of the middle turbinate you can see the posterior ethmoids and you can see the sphenoid sinus as well posteriorly so there are four lamellae of the lateral nasal wall during phase during phase there will be four lamellae from anterior to posterior the first one will be your uncinate process the second one will be your anterior ethmoidal wall. The third one will be your ground lamellae. And the post fourth one will be your sphenoid wall. Okay, anterior sphenoid wall will be there. So these are the four lamellae that you come across while doing phase from anterior to posterior. That will come across in the next class. Okay, coming to middle meatus. What are all the structures present in the middle meatus? Okay, structures present in the middle meatus. Now just <coughs> remember here you have a structure that is a, the semicircular structure you can see here there is a semicircular structure over here that is called as uncinate process okay so uncinate process if you go into the middle meatus if you just uh, lateralize the mid middle turbinate and you go enter the middle meatus and you see on the lateral side you will be seeing a first of all a semicircular structure you will be able to see you can you can see here this is the uncinate process can see here so this is see this is the uncinate process if you can see clearly if you are able to negotiate it this is the uncinate process and uh, just if you go posteriorly there will be a bulla ethmoidalis 
and in between these two if you come if you come a bit and uh, behind this you uncinate process just inferiorly and uh, anteriorly if you come there will be middle meatus ostium uh, the maxillary ostium will be lying uh, widening of the maxillary ostium is called as middle meatal androstomy a part of the sinus surgery face functional endoscopic sinus surgery okay so first of all come to our ancinate process okay which is a semicircular sickle shaped or semicircular structure okay this is a uh, which has got a horizontal process as well as a vertical process it has got a horizontal process and it has got a vertical process right okay, sorry this one is vertical and this one is horizontal okay one vertical and one horizontal okay and uh, another structure you can see here is ethmoidal bulla okay if you see if you draw a diagram like this a big okay uncinate process you can see the anterior air cells starting over here okay and uh, immediately anteriorly okay anteriorly anterior most in the ethmoid compartment itself you will be having a large air cell that is called we call it as ethmoidal bulla okay ethmoidal bulla and there will be multiple small air cells lying over here behind it uh, okay like a honeycomb appearance those are anterior ethmoids and the second part of the middle turbinate that is ground lamella or basal lamella will be coming over here okay will be dividing the anterior ethmoid air cells as well as posterior ethmoid air cells posterior ethmoid air cells will be large in size and less in number anterior ethmoid air cells will be small in size and more in number okay so anterior ethmoid air cells are small size and more in number posterior ethmoid air cells are large in size and less in number in between them the partitioning structure is nothing but your second part of the middle turbinate that is your ground lamella or basal lamella okay so this is your ancinate process okay on the lying laterally on the lateral wall and this is your ethmoid compartment okay so once you start the, the seeing the entire ethmoid compartment the initially you will get ethmoidal bulla and after that once you remove the ethmoidal bulla you will enter the anterior ethmoidal air cavity and if you remove all these cells and <clears throat> you puncture inferiorly the ground lamella you will be entering the posterior ethmoidal cavity remove all these cells and if you still come medially posteriorly and medially you will be able to negotiate an opening that is your sphenoid sinus and you can also clear the contents from here directly okay right so <clears throat> this is ancinate process ethmoidal bulla and uh, the the two dimensional gap the gap between these two structures is called as hiatus semi lunaris this is semi circular in shape right hiatus semi lunaris okay okay hiatus semi lunaris and as this is lying inferiorly this is hiatus semi lunaris inferior right or if you uh, imagine this space this has a three dimensional space uh, there you will be seeing a space where once you enter the middle meatus you will be seeing ethmoidal bulla straight in front of you and on the sides you will be seeing a <coughs> uncinate process and <coughs> and the uh, on the other side on the medial side you will be seeing the middle turbinate lateral wall okay the middle turbinate will be lying over here ethmoidal bulla will be lying over there and uncinate process will be lying over here if i break the uncinate laterally uh, towards my side medially and if i enter inside the maxillary sinus opening will be present maxillary ostium will be present okay so this three dimensional space which is lying in between your uncinate and uh, lateral nasal wall and your uh, ethmoidal bulla posteriorly and lateral wall of the middle turbinate medially this space is called as ethmoidal infundibulum so the three dimensional space is called as ethmoidal infundibulum okay the two dimensional space is hiatus semi lunaris in between these two the entry door like structure is uh, semi hiatus semi lunaris inferior whereas the room like structure is ethmoidal infundibulum right clear <coughs> okay so coming to the next so what are all the sinuses that drain into your middle meatus okay sinuses that drain into the middle meatus okay sinuses drain so <coughs> 
So the sinuses that drain into the middle meatus are maxillary because maxillary ostium opens into your maxillary <coughs> middle meatus, right? Maxillary frontal. We have just seen the frontal will also be draining into the middle meatus and anterior ethmoidal air cells. You have seen the anterior ethmoidal air cells also straightforward in front of you. The anterior ethmoidal air cells are present. See, this is your bulla ethmoidalis, right? So the uh, <coughs> the bulla ethmoidalis will be draining into your middle meatus. This is the middle meatus, right? The ethmoidal anterior ethmoidal air cells all will be draining into this. Uh, this one, uh, right, middle meatus. And if you take out this ancinate and if you go laterally, there will be maxillary sinus. So the maxillary sinus will be also be draining into the middle meatus. If you go up from here, there will be frontal sinus. The frontal drainage will also be into the middle meatus, right? So these three are anteriorly lying sinuses, right? Okay. So these three are anteriorly lying sinuses. They will always drain into your middle meatus, whereas the posteriorly lying posterior ethmoids. So, <clears throat> coming to the posterior ethmoid, okay, anterior ethmoid and posterior ethmoid, which are separated by ground lamella. So, if you go over the posterior ethmoid and the sphenoid sinuses, they will be draining into your superior meatus, okay. So, this is the drainage pattern, okay. There is another uh, definition given that is osteomeatal unit or Picardil's circle, okay. What exactly is this osteomeatal unit? or picardal circle so what exactly is this your hiatus semilunaris right your uncinate process and your ethmoidal bulla these three joined together will form a osteometal unit hiatus semilunaris uncinate process and ethmoidal bulla if you see an endoscopic structure see this is the uncinate process and this is the bulla ethmoidalis right in between these two a door like opening okay or just there is nothing like door here that is imaginary opening the two dimensional space in between these two this complete unit is called as osteomeatal unit because all the <coughs> bones and all the meatus will be converging in this area so this unit is called as osteomeatal unit this is your middle turbinate this is the septum okay middle turbinate is pushed with the, an elevator and they are showing the middle meatus here okay if you see there's a bullite model is uncinate process in between these two is the imaginary hiatus semilunaris okay so this three together is combined is called as osteomeatal unit or picardal circle okay and uh, <clears throat> as you are already having just now we have discussed uncinate process like this okay ethmoidal bulla all the ethmoidal air cavity ethmoidal air cavity will be there and above you will be having skull base right sometimes between the skull base and the ethmoids there is a defect in the pneumatization forming a recess this is called as suprabullar recess okay likewise posteriorly okay sometimes posterior to the anterior ethmoid cavities there will be a defect in the pneumatization making a forming a recess here also this is retrobulbar recess okay retro sorry retrobullar recess okay retrobullar recess okay this is ethmoid okay this is anterior ethmoid cavity and this is a your ground lamella that is second part of middle turbinate and this part is skull base okay okay so this is your uncinate process right this is your uncinate process and the imaginary two dimensional structure here hiatus semilunaris okay and anteriorly you will having ethmoidal bulla right so the anterior ethmoid air cells and you will be having posterior ethmoids here so this entire structure we call it as hiatus semilunaris inferior and you can see a semilunaris structure formed just anti to this inferior that we call it as hiatus semilunaris hiatus semilunaris superior which is lying above if you see the hiatus semilunaris superior it formed by suprabullar recess in between the skull base and ethmoid cavity and the retrobullar recess that is formed in between the ethmoid posterior wall and ground lamella 
right so these two recesses together will look like a semicircular structure lying exactly mirroring to the hiatus semilunaris inferior this part is called as hiatus semilunaris superior okay fine <coughs> okay so this hiatus semilunaris superioris is also called as another name for this is sinus lateralis of grunwald okay this is also called as sinus lateralis of grunwald right clear and coming to the next <coughs> other structure ground lamella we have already discussed you know what is exactly ground lamella okay and coming to the superior turbinate okay coming to the superior turbinate here what is just like inferior middle another turbinate will be lying superiorly that is a part of your ethmoid bone okay superior like middle turbinate superior turbinate is also a part of the ethmoid bone uh, and uh, the superior turbinate will help in identification of will help in identification of sphenoid sphenoid ostium during sinus surgery okay sphenoid ostium identification is easy if you identify the superior turbinate during first surgery and also another cell seen in this uh, ct scan picture is haller cells these are nothing but the pneumatization of the inferior orbital wall say this is the orbit orbit medial wall is nothing but lamina papyracea and orbit inferior wall common with the maxillary sinus that is orbit inferior wall pneumatization of this orbit inferior wall this bone infraorbital bone will form a hair cell sometimes that is called haller cell okay haller cell one should be cautious enough while doing uh, while removing the haller cell the haller cell may sometimes impact the drainage system of the maxillary sinus and can cause maxillary sinusitis so removal of the haller cell is important when you are doing a uh, removing the haller cell nearby the infraorbital vessels and the infraorbital nerve will be running over here which supply the infraorbital nerve which supplies the sensation to this part of the face okay so the patient may lose if that nerve is damaged the patient will lose sensation in this area okay so be careful while removing the haller cell okay so at pneumatization of the infraorbital wall the cells formed due to pneumatization of the infraorbital wall are called haller cells okay but haller cell pneumatization developmentally occurs from posterior ethmoid region not from anterior ethmoids remember anterior ethmoids will be lying anteriorly and posterior from the posterior ethmoids only the pneumatization pattern will come down and they will be forming the haller cells so haller cells are a part of posterior ethmoid remember this point haller cells are a part of posterior ethmoid okay clear coming to the frontal drainage system okay next thing is frontal drainage system so where do the frontal sinus drains just now we have studied the frontal sinus drains into the middle meatus sometimes it may even directly drain into the nasal cavity depending on the attachment of the uncinate the frontal sinus drainage depends on the uncinate attachment attachment of the uncinate above okay you can see in this case this is the uncinate process and this is attaching to lamina papyracea here so if this uncinate process is attaching to lamina papyracea you can see the frontal sinus is draining directly into your nasal cavity if your uncinate process is attaching to the cribriform plate now you can see the frontal sinus is draining into the maxillary and from there this is the middle meatus area right even if this is attached to the crista gallia also then the drainage system will be into the maxillary sinus okay so ultimately if the patient is having in these cases in the where the uncinate process is attaching medial structures or superior structure cribriform plate or crista gallia structures uh, in these cases the frontal sinusitis if it is developed uh, it ultimately causes the maxillary sinusitis that is the point to remember here okay next coming to the superior turbinate as we have our superior meatus into the superior meatus as you already know posterior ethmoid air cells will open into the superior meatus into the inferior meatus your nasolacrimal duct will open with the help of hasner's valve no sinus is going to open in the inferior meatus coming to the middle meatus your maxillary sinus frontal sinus and anterior ethmoid sinus will drain into the middle meatus 
if you go a bit above and posterior superior meatus will be draining and your posterior ethmoid air cells and sphenoid air cells will be draining into your superior meatus so a step wise hierarchical arrangement of the turbinates and their meati and the respective sinuses lying near to them will respectively drain into those meati okay once again i repeat inferior turbinate and infi into the inferior meatus only hasner's valve is present nasolacrimal duct opens here the lacrimal drainage system opens here okay only the tears will be opening into the uh, this inferior meatus okay and uh, in the middle meatus the maxillary frontal and the anterior these three structure that are present even you can see directly you can remember like this frontal maxillary and anterior so these three will open into your middle meatus and lying back is the sphenoid is like posterior right okay so here you have your sphenoid sinus here in the posteriorly so that post that will drain into your superior meatus posterior ethmoids will be lying over here though those will be draining into your sphenoid uh, sorry superior meatus right and coming to the next <coughs> so just a minute just a short two minute break 